This is Andy Peroff, Boxing Social in association with Betfred, and I'm glad to be joined by Lou De Bella here in Frisco, Texas. Lou, it's been a while since I last saw you, obviously, with Miami. So how have you been keeping... A little colder from... here in Dallas today. It's more like New York. Uh, how are you? Has, has life been treating you since then? Uh, it's, you know, never a dull moment. Sorry. Let's get no. Let's get into obviously Regis Progre versus Mark Morris Hooker. Just talking about the fight and how how you find negotiation. I think it's a great fight. You know, I think it's 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 the best fight you can make around that weight class. It's going to be at a catch weight of one forty three. Um, we would have fought it at one forty, but in order to get the fight, um, Hooker wants a catch weight, and you know, look, uh, that's fine. It's not a title fight. It's just a fight between the two best available guys, the two best one forty pound fighters that are not. Uh, don't have their dance cards occupied fighting each other the best against the best that's the way it should be you know Josh Taylor has a mandatory it was just announced um, Ramirez had a mandatory that got coronavirus out of China but it looks like that's happening uh, I, th I think in May um, so their their dance cards are both full and right now former champion Maurice Hooker former champion reaches pro gray um, it's as good a fight as we can make it that weight Pro Grey Hooker is, is a brilliant fight without a world title on the line. How would you expect it to play out between the two of them? Obviously very different styles. Maurice is going to try to box. I think Regis is going to be aggressive. And, and um, you know, I think he's going to be careful but aggressive. I, I, I think that someone's going to get hurt in the fight, and I don't think it's going to be Regis. Um, I respect Mo Hooker. He's a terrific fighter. It's a dangerous fight when you're in there with a guy that's accomplished what Hooker has, who a, was a world champion and has been in there with the best. I, I think it's a, it should be a sensational fight. I expect it to be explosive, particularly in the way it ends. And, and if you ask me to uh, make my prediction, I would predict pro grade by stoppage in the late rounds. Obviously, Tom's passed since uh, Regis's close decision loss to Josh Taylor. How's he been feeling and looking as he's returned to camp? He's hungry. He wants to get back in there. He, you know, we tried to get this fight done as quickly as we could. He's fighting in April. He wants to get back in there. Um, he's chopping at the bit. I, I know he's hungry again, and he's working real hard. Um, you know that it's time to regroup and move forward, and that's what we're doing. Obviously, you mentioned earlier on as well, Taylor's just had his uh, mandatory announced against Kong Song. Just talking about that, what, what, what you kind of expect there? I don't see any reason to think it's a competitive fight. It's just, I don't even, I was sort of trying to figure out how Kong Song became the mandatory to begin with. But um, look, Taylor, uh, the fight's going to be in Scotland. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, well, he, you know, he had an incredible win. Uh, he's a very good fighter, and he's going to fight a home, you know, another you know, hometown hero kind of fight. It's a perfect place to do it back in Scotland against an opponent that pretty much is, I, I'd say, not an A-class opponent or certainly not an opponent that's well-known. But I, I'm, I'm guaranteeing that there'll be a lot of excited Scots people hanging out and uh, wanting, to, wanting to hail him in a homecoming fight. It's a good opportunity for him to showcase himself. Uh, he didn't pick the opponent. It was, uh, it was mandated. So I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And, and you know what? He just had an incredibly grueling fight. I mean, if you saw Josh's face after the pro grade fight, you wouldn't have thought he won. Um, and I'm not complaining about the decision, but I'm just saying if you saw his face, you wouldn't have thought he won. Um, oh, no, it wasn't. There's a Scotsman in the background with an, I, I, an I, uh, FL TV shirt going headbutts. But uh, no, I think a lot of that was leather. Um, no, I think it's a good fight for and people. I think it'll be a great event in Scotland. Obviously, Josh and Regis fought out a brilliant fight up, uh, in that World Boxing Super Series final. I know after that, you was keen to try and get that rematch. Do you see that happening at any point down the line? I think it's likely at some point down the line. Um, but who knows? It's boxing. You can't predict anything in this sport. The, what you have to do is do what we're doing. You have to go out there and make the biggest and best fight that's available to you. And right now, the biggest and best fight available to Regis was Mo Hooker, and that's what we're doing. Obviously, just to move away from Regis, just a small matter of a heavyweight clash on this past weekend, Walter Fury too. That was a ass whooping, huh? I mean, it was that was just a brilliant performance by uh, Fury. Um, you know, I didn't think Deontay looked himself from the first bell, but certainly the fight in my mind ended with the the big big punch and he was at the. Seven. Seven no, 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 no. When was oh, the uh, third round? Third third round that the punch in the third round was the decisive it wasn't the it wasn't the last round it was the punch in the third round was the decisive punch and i don't think Deontay ever really recovered from it and and uh and i personally thought the stoppage was 
perfect than it could have been earlier. Obviously, was you surprised at all by Tyson's tactics of sort of going there and rush Wilder and throwing the as much? I was surprised. The only reason I, 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 yeah, I was surprised because, but he said he was going to do it. Yeah. I mean, the funny part was he told everyone what he was going to do. Just no one thought he was really going to do it, and I'm one of the people that didn't think he was going to do it. I thought it was smoke and mirrors, and that he was just looking to get into, you know, Wilder's head, and he was going to go out there and box him and try to make it a, a boxing match. He made it a fight. And um, he was the superior boxer, but he was also the stronger man. He was the guy pushing back his opponent. And, 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 and he was the dangerous guy in the ring that night. Um, I think Deontay Wilder is better than that, actually. Like, I, I, it bums me out that it bothers me when a, two, two really good fighters fight and then someone's thrown into a garbage can because he doesn't have his night and he does, he's a bad night and then people are trying to denigrate his whole career. He's still one of the hardest punchers in boxing and he's better than he showed, I think, in that fight. But that takes nothing away from Fury, who, you know, man, F Fury got everything right. He said how he was going to do it and then he came in the ring as the kink. But he left the ring as the king. So all power to Tyson Fury. I mean, cheers. He's a, I like Tyson. He's a good guy. But, like, you know, how could you have anything but respect for him right now? He's the king of the heavyweights at the moment. What did you make of Deontay's talk after the fight about his costume weighing down on him on his ring walk? You know, I'm not going to get into that in specificity. I'll say this, though. I've been in this business for 30 years. Fighters like to try to figure out why they lost. Is there, I think his legs weren't there. They, I, I'll say this. I didn't think his legs looked normal from the beginning of the fight, but I'm not, I'm not sitting here necessarily saying it had something to do with an outfit. Do you know what I mean? I, mean, I think he would have been better off maybe, even if he believed that, keeping that to himself would have probably been good advice from his team. But, but you know what? In general, particularly great fighters or fighters that have had a lot of success, I mean, this guy was undefeated before this, this loss. Um, Fighters tend to like to try to reach for reasons or find some reason beyond I just wasn't good enough as to why they didn't win it on a particular night. So it wasn't that surprising. I've heard, you know, how many times have I heard in the last 30 years from countless fighters, like, and I mean countless, you know, I'm not making any excuses, but, and, and, and honestly, you hear that almost every time a fighter loses. Very rare to not hear that. Deontay's come out and said he's going to invoke that rematch clause. Are you interested in a third fight? I'll watch it. I mean, there's still the element of chance with a, a punch. Deontay's still a great puncher. I mean, I watch it. Am I excited about it? No, if I was managing Deontay, I probably would try to uh, look at a different game plan, but that's, it's not my business. You know, I mean, I, I, to me, I would think Deontay could make more money if Joshua fought Fury and he was guaranteed the winner. You know, maybe a fight with Andy Ruiz and Deontay first. Let Deontay have a big fight that, that's not, uh, you know, Fury or, or, or Joshua, and then get the winner. I mean, in a, in a perfect world, as a fan, that's a scenario I probably would like as a fan, to see Deontay fight like Andy Ruiz next, and then fight the winner of Joshua Fury, get, like getting a guarantee that he fights the winner. Of Joshua Fury, but, I'm, but it's but it's up to him, and and you know what I mean? It's his career, it's his life. He's he's always made a point of the fact that he makes his own decisions, and if he exercised that clause, that was his decision. A couple more quick questions I just wanted to ask you. Obviously, when we was in Miami, you talked about how you tried to set up a meeting between Wilder and DeZoon, and on the back of that, you never worked with Deontay Wilder again. My colleague Rob Tebbett spoke to Shelley Finkel uh, last week, and Shelley refused to comment on it and said that you knew what actually happened. Yeah, and I Can knew you what actually happened and I, I, and, and I told you what actually happened. So so, I never asked you about it in Miami, but I know that you did with others. There's nothing to say. I mean, like, if he refused to comment, he refused to comment. And, I, and by the way, like, I was asked a question, I answered it. But like, pretty much the whole industry knows what, what happened. And, and, and look, I, 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 I said this before, I'll say it again. I thought I did the right thing, I would have done the same thing again. My job was to try to open all doors and avenues. You know, and by the way, the, the, the meeting that he found so objectionable, Shelley was sitting there. So was Al Heyman. So, you know, did they set the meeting up? No, but that raises another question. They were his managers. Why wouldn't they have set the meeting up with the zone? They could have. I mean, I'm, look, I don't even want to talk about it. What's done is done. I have no hard feelings. You know, Shelley can say whatever the fuck Shelley wants. I don't give a fuck. With respect to Deontay and I, I wouldn't have been involved with Deontay at all if he didn't make that decision. So I'm grateful for the run I had with Deontay. And, and if anyone thinks I was watching the fight the other night 
like rooting for what happened to happen. You know, I didn't have that kind of attitude at all. I got no, I got nothing but love for him and his family. He, you know, if you work with people and then things end, but I, I, I wouldn't have been there in the first place if not for Deontay Wilder. So I got nothing but love for him. And finally, how big would an undisputed bout between Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury be if that could be made before the Cuba Rapula fight and if Fury wasn't available? It's a monstrous fight, but it should be in a soccer stadium in the UK, not in, not in a place where you can't have a beer in Saudi Arabia. And by the way, how big is it? It's a lot bigger in a st soccer stadium in the UK or a stadium in Vegas where it could also sell out, though, though honestly, it'd be the biggest fight in the history of Great Britain. Where, where does it rank in boxing history? Biggest fight in the history of the UK. It's one of the big heavyweight fights of all time, but what makes it so big? Two of the, arguably, two of the three greatest British heavyweights in the history of boxing. You know, those are, I mean, that, that, that probably is what it is, with Lennox Lewis, in my mind, still being, until proven otherwise, number one. But, but um, it's a sensational matchup. It's a terrific fight. And it's the kind of fight that I, as a fan, would get on an airplane and fly over to Great Britain. You'd be welcome with open arms, Lee. Yes, but I will promise you I'm not getting on an airplane and flying <laughs> over to Saudi Arabia to see it. But I would go to, to see it in Great Britain. And look, I mean, it's not, nothing. Look, Saudi Arabia wants to buy fights. That, that, that's their business. But it's just there's something about the idea that uh, the biggest UK fight ever in the heavyweight division wouldn't, might not happen in the UK. That I would hope that that, I would hope that, that, that clear heads prevail and it winds up in a soccer stadium in, in the UK. Well, Lou, we'll leave there now because I know that there's a queue forming behind me. But I appreciate you speaking to me. It's good to catch up with you and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks for speaking to Boxing Social. My pleasure. Bro.